At this point, pretty much everyone knows who Traylon Burks is. He's become a superhuman-like wide receiver for the Arkansas Razorbacks over the last three years and is a likely late first round to early second round draft pick. He's been a huge part in the resurgence of Arkansas football, led by quarterback KJ Jefferson and head coach Sam Pittman. Unfortunately for them, they're going to have to replace Burks, but on the bright side, they have someone with all the potential in the world to become even better than Burks. Coming out of high school, this guy was seen as the best wide receiver prospect since Doriel Green Beckham was a superstar in his state and had all the athletic tools to dominate the college game. After a wishy-washy career so far, he decided to transfer from Oklahoma and will now be the focal point of this Arkansas offense next year. Today, I'm going to introduce you to who this is. We're going to talk about his college journey so far and why he could save his career with the Razorback. So without further ado, let's get started. You're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and it is none other than former Oklahoma and current Arkansas wide receiver Jaden Hazelwood. But who is Jaden Hazelwood? Let's go back in time. Apparently, he's the highest rated wide receiver in the recruiting industry since DGB and Stephon Diggs, but how did that happen? Well, back in the day, his dad went to Oklahoma and taught Jaden how to play and watch football. His dad did not play for the Sinners, but was just a student there. Jaden, on the other hand, was a natural athlete and was seen as the next big thing in the area and made an impact right away as a freshman in high school. As a sophomore at Cedar Grove High School, he began to blow up as he gained 11 offers and a ton of national attention. His first collegiate offer came from Illinois in 2015, and his first SEC offer came from Kentucky in 2016. He eventually blew up at camps and visited Alabama, Ohio State, and Georgia. For a while, it looked like he was going to leave the state, but then he committed to Kirby Smart in Georgia and became the highest rated commit since AJ Green at the position. He did this as only a sophomore, and he was a huge fan of the Bulldogs. Apparently, he shared a memory of him being nothing but a pure fan after he thought Georgia was going to be Alabama in the Rose Bowl. He fell in love with Sanford Stadium and all the good quarterbacks they had, so it seemed like a picture-perfect fit for Jaden to go there. When he committed the best wide receiver in Georgia history, statistically, Terrence Edwards had this to say, quote, I thought this man was going to be the one to break all of my records. That's coming from the leading receiver in Georgia history. But I want you to do what's best for you, brother. You're a good kid. Wait, what do you mean by that? Yeah, he had decommitted at this point. On October 3rd of 2018, he sent shockwaves to the recruiting world as he decommitted from the Bulldogs and reopened his recruitment. This was a mystery, but obviously something happened behind the scenes. Hazelwood said, quote, something happened. I don't want to speak on it, but something happened and I just ended up doing it meaning he decommitted. If I had to take a guess, I believe it was the system that he'd be playing in, as he played in a more air it out style, Georgia obviously runs the ball first. Also, maybe something happened with the coaching staff, but I don't really know. Either way, he was no longer going to be a Georgia Bulldog. He then became one of the best receivers in Georgia high school football history, but his senior year was met with tragedy that has also helped fuel him to become the person he is today. His friend Trayvon would pass away after he would get shot over the summer. That guy was part of the 2018 recruiting class and was actually going to be a wide receiver at Valdosta State, and those two were really close, so obviously this really hurt him. Also, it's just a very sad story in general. Hazelwood said, quote, We used to hang out all the time. We used to always hang out with each other at one another's houses after games, and we'd always go to the Waffle House together, and we'd ride in the same car. We were close. Jaden wore his number and made an incredible catch in the state title game to honor him, and this was met with nothing but emotion. Jaden said, quote, I wore Trayvon's jersey today and made a big catch to win the game. That's like a dream come true. Down 13 to 7 with just seconds to go, he had caught a pass to win the state title game. And this, and this game was inside of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, so it was on the biggest stage in the biggest moment of his life. That same day, he also revealed his final five schools, but in a weird way. It was actually etched onto his cleats, and it was now time to focus where he would go to school. From there, there were rumors swirling where he would go, but after a great visit to Miami, many thought the Hurricanes were a lock to land him, but that was not the case. Jaden said, quote, Everybody is thinking it is Miami right now, which it is not. It's just the only school I've visited since I decommitted. That's really it. His other four schools included Tennessee, Georgia, Florida State, and Oklahoma. When he visited Norman, he had an interesting reaction to the place. He said, quote, It was real windy. I think they had a tornado a few counties over. 
but it was great. I've already been to a game there, so I wanted to see other parts of it. Just like the Oklahoma weather, his recruitment was also pretty stormy, but he eventually chose the Sooners and head coach Lincoln Riley during the Army All-American game. He joined two other five-star receivers in the class in Theo Weiss and Trajan Bridges, yet later Bridges was bumped down to a four. This created a three-headed monster going into Oklahoma, but why did he choose the Sooners to begin with? Hazelwood said, quote, Sometimes you gotta step out of your comfort zone. We're going to see how this works. I think he liked the coaching staff and the challenge ahead of him, so now it was time for him to get to work. He was also friends with Spencer Rattler, and the Oklahoma offense would give him a chance to showcase his skills. He was a big deal and had a ton of hype. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a five-star recruit, the number one wide receiver, and the fourth best player in the class of 2019. One scout had this to say, quote, the six foot three receiver has explosive speed, great size, can jump out of the building, and has tremendous hands. He is versatile and athletic enough to play defensive back, but his future is most likely at receiver. So now that we know about him, how would he do at Oklahoma, and how is he going to impact, and why did he end up at Arkansas? In 2019, Hazelwood would be a freshman. He'd catch 19 passes for 272 yards and one touchdown. He was not the top option, as that belonged to CeeDee Lamb. When he headed off to the NFL, many wondered if Hazelwood could fill that void and that gap that was left by Lamb. That's not what would happen. He'd go down with an injury before the year. He only ended up catching four passes for 65 yards. Going into 2021, many people now thought he could finally break out. Except, Marvin Mims had already done it the year before, and fellow 2019 signee Theo Weiss was already looking like he was going to be the next big thing. Hazelwood would still have a good year as he caught 39 passes for 399 yards and 6 touchdowns. He wasn't good enough to head to the NFL, but he also knew it was time for a change in scenery. That is why he entered the 2022 transfer portal. He definitely had plenty of schools going after him, but he pretty quickly settled on Arkansas. Burks caught 66 passes for 1,104 yards and 11 touchdowns and helped the Razorbacks have a breakout season. Now with him going off to the NFL, Hazelwood will now be expected to have big production. Former Florida State transfer Warren Thompson also is supposed to be in the mix, but honestly, Hazelwood is going to be the go-to guy for Jefferson. He's going to have a lot of hype. He has all the physical tools in the world to be a star, but can he finally put it together his senior year? That's the big question mark. If my and other people's judgments are correct though, Hazelwood is going to have a huge year and is hopefully going to finally live up to that 5 star status he had. We will have to wait and see though, but the opportunity is there for him to take, it's just going to be up to him. What do you guys think though? If you're an Oklahoma fan, what went wrong for Hazelwood at Oklahoma? If you're an Arkansas fan, what are your expectations for him and the 2022 season? And also, what's another transfer or topic I could take a look at in my next video? Be sure to let me know down below. Smash that like button if you want to support today's video, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.